Hi and welcome from Buster Spring 2020. I'm Anne Katrin Klose and I'm talking to uh, Sam Bazu today from Progress um, about universal Windows platform apps. Hi Sam. Hello. Um, our topic is universal Windows platform apps, as I just said, but what really is this? Because the concept seems to be a bit uh, undefined in some places. Right. right. Well, first up, thank you for having me. I love Germany. I love coming out uh, to Basta. Uh, so yes, I actually just did a session and Universal Windows Platform and Uda Loopy Apps. Um, it's great. It's just a little confusing. It's too many things sometimes for developers. Mm -hmm. So uh, essentially, this kind of goes back to the history of how Windows apps and how the Windows stack kind of evolved over the years. We started out with uh, back in the Windows 8 days, Windows Phone days. Things evolved to be more universal, more inclusive to more Windows devices. Mm -hmm. So UWP today stands for a few different things. Mm -hmm. It is universal within the Windows stack. So if you build a UWP app, it runs on every Windows device, which is laptops and tablets and Surface hubs and HoloLens. Mm -hmm. But how you build that app really depends on several different technologies that you can do. So that's where I think some of the confusion lies. But at the end of the day, we are all trying to build Windows apps. Mm -hmm. So uh, you talked about building these apps. Uh, are there specific tools or technologies you use to build them? Yes, sure. So traditionally, UWP apps, we have been building them with uh, C Sharp mm -hmm. as a language and then XAML as the markup language. Mm -hmm. So you bring those two together and you build an app which is native to Windows and it uses all of the native APIs and it's performant. Um, it is just that the stack itself has evolved. Mm -hmm. So it in includes more things than just C Sharp and XAML nowadays because at the end of the day, we are looking to build apps that we can put in the Windows Store. We want people to be using Windows devices where they can go and search for apps, download the apps and uninstall them without running the risk of the app doing anything bad to their machines. So we want that sandbox, but just to get more and more apps in the store, uh, Microsoft has allowed more and more technologies to be used to build what's called a UWP app. Mm -hmm. And whether you want to use some of the Windows 10 features, uh, that may be up to each app, but essentially, when an app comes over to be a part of the Windows Store, it is a Windows app. So C Sharp XAML is the most common way of doing it, but that's not the only way. So UWP XAML uses a specific dialect of XAML, while there's also Xamarin, which is meant for cross-platform mobile apps. They have a different dialect of XAML, but Xamarin Forms applications can also be made to work on UWP apps, so they can also be put in the Windows Store. You could also look at web technologies like React Native. You can look at progressive web apps. Those can also be part of the Windows Store. You can have C++ and DirectX. So there's a whole plethora of languages that you can use now to build a Windows app. Um, this is a pretty interesting concept, actually. So uh, if you can use a whole stack, what about PWAs, for example, can you also put them into this place? Yes, yeah. And PWAs have really gained a lot of popularity in the last couple of years. And the idea is you will write a single page application or a spy application and your choice of framework really does not matter. You can use mm -hmm. Angular, React or Vue or whatever else that you're using to build a spy application. And these apps start being good citizens on mobile devices and tablets. So it's not just a web application. You can start having push notifications. You can start having some storage for the app and you can start having service workers that run in the background. They maybe refresh your data. So it's a nice, rich experience. And again, the technology that you use to build a PWA really does not matter. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft would like, uh, and then there are actually lots of apps in the store that are, that are PWAs. And again, they're written with multiple JavaScript type technologies and they're all welcome in the store. Now, once you bring an app into the store, then it's up to the individual developer how nicely integrated they are in the Windows 10 stack. Like, are you using live tiles? Are you using Windows notifications? Those are all incremental things you can do. But just out of the box, any PWA is welcome in the Windows store. In fact, Microsoft has their bots kind of crawling and they will surface PWAs just because they're out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but also Microsoft themselves are working on quite a few things right now. So uh, .NET 5 is coming up yes, later this yes. year. Is there anything going to happen for uh, the Universal Windows Platform apps with that? 
Yeah, and this is all evolving. Uh, so we are, this is actually very exciting. So right now, .NET is a little fragmented with .NET Framework, with uh, uh, .NET Core, Mono. So they're trying to take the best of each of these .NET frameworks and try to make it one uniform thing. So to the developer, it should be transparent that you're building a .NET application, and they will choose the runtime and the tools based on the type of app that you're building. But behind the scenes, that is a lot of work. And Microsoft announced this last year, and they're going to keep working on this. Hopefully, by late 2020, we are going to see .NET 5. Again, it's a lot of work in terms of tooling. Uh, in terms of UWP, the stack might evolve a little bit, but exactly how you build applications with .NET 5, that's not going to change fundamentally. And again, some of these things are, again, evolving as we speak. Uh, but it will be based on the different technologies that you do, XAML, uh, and React Native and all of these things that you build UWP with today, mm -hmm. you can keep doing it tomorrow. It's just the tooling and how the app renders, what's the runtime, how developers hook up the UI, that part might change a little bit. Another keyword um, currently in development is platform you know. Is that mm -hmm. relevant to uh, this concept too? Yeah, yeah, and, and Uno Platform, it, th this is a third-party company we're talking mm -hmm. about, and, and it's, it's very exciting what they have done. They have taken UWP, uh, runtime and UWP XAML and ex essentially extended it to include iOS and Android because UWP is universal within Windows, but most of us carry Android or iOS phones, so would it not, not be nice to have our apps running there? So they have renderers, they have the bridges to make your UWP apps run on iOS or Android. It takes a little bit of orchestration because it's a for smaller form factor. Uh, and they also have uh, special things like if you have a Xamarin Forms application, now you can render things for the web, uh, which mm -hmm. is not quite done like in a Silverlight way. There is no plugin. It's just pure clean HTML. And uh, they are evolving. Uh, another concept is WinUI, which is the standard standardization of the UI stack. And Uno Platform is working with them. So it's, it's exciting times. Uh, definitely sounds like it. So you'd say uh, UWP isn't that, definitely, oh, right? No, no, definitely not. Now, there have been media reports, there have been articles mm -hmm. that have been clickbaity where people like to claim it's dead. But essentially, to Microsoft, it's the same. It's just how, how much prioritization do they want to uh, give to hardcore UWP apps? That's open to debate, but in terms of how you build Windows apps, that's not going away anywhere. The Windows Store is here, and it's just more and more choices for developers as to how you build those UWP apps. So it's not dead. It's going to be fine. Okay. Thank you for the interview. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.